Hey everybody, I'm going to be doing a little bit of video here and I'm going to show you that we got a wind speeds about 11 to 14 as you can tell. Today's date is a 3-5 of 20 and me and Daniel's up a little bit late working on a few things. We're going to get out here and show you something. So let's head on out there. It's a dark at night. So we're going to get out there and I'm going to let these crazy damn dogs out. Watch them run. That shows you I got a pile of them, don't I? <laughs> So what we got is we're going to talk about the brakes on the wind turbines. We're going to go ahead and show you what they do. So let me grab a few tools here. I've got some batteries I just brought in for a job. And uh, I'll get some tools, what we used in the job. There we go. And I'm going to show you how we put a turbine on brake in an emergency. Uh, wind speed's being... And going to go a little higher here today. Y'all pardon all my stuff's laying out here, big mess. But we have, uh, oh, here we go. We have the turbines going, and I was out here earlier putting these little things in so we can track the temperature. There's going to be one on each turbine. Now, what we've got up here is we have, let's see our output right now. Uh, 485 watts here. I'll focus out 201 and 200 plus 500 watts. So wind speeds are going to be increasing and I'm going to show you here how we're going to do this. Now the way that it's set up, I've increased this rectifier and we're using 150 amp because of that turbine puts out a lot. Now you're going to look up here and I want you to follow my wiring real careful here. Daniel, hold this. The wiring is running like this. You have the wires that come in from the turbine. They come in in the center of this big three-bladed switch right here in the dead center, okay? And they come down through here when the switch is down. So all three will come down and they feed through here. They also will return through here because of this. So when I throw this switch up, that was coming back. So it goes out these and comes back through here. So let me get you a real good picture. I'm going to turn this little light on so you can see better. All right. And you'll see how they're ran. Now, they go over here in each turbine. I'll try to do the equal lengths coming back over here. So each turbine has a set of resistors to knock it down to where it, ran, it runs at 38% of its maximum potential. And that's in case we have storms and you don't want to leave your turbine on brake and you don't want to put brake and put the heat in the turbine itself. You want to put it through something else and that's what these are for. So it comes down and then passes through these after the resistors and back and comes over and reconnects. So it's broken away from the original straight through and it's making a loop, resistored loop back to these terminals right here and I'll grab a screwdriver right quick and we'll show you what that does so you can see that power is increasing the storm is going to get here we've got some snow and stuff coming and we will just look at this there's the chaos turbine putting out 500 there's the little uh, 500 watt Chinese turbine up in the front so let me go ahead and pause this and I'll grab a screwdriver and we'll show you what internal looks like all right, now with the cover off, you're going to see it like this. And we're going to do the brakes on it because look at that power coming in right now. 1,000 watts. That's that 800-watt turbine, guys. Look below the video. I'll put the links to these turbines. I can't believe how many people go, man, where in the hell did you get that? I bought one of them from the Midwest, and it's full of blades, and it don't do nothing but make noise. Well, these make power. So if you want one, look below the video. That's why I put the links down there because you know what? If you spend your money, you deserve the power you paid for now, we're going to go over here and we're going to use the chaos as a shutdown example because it's thermodyne and, hell, I'm abusive to therm thermodynes. They're tough. So, um, you have your wires coming in from your wind turbine. One, two, three. Now, right now, because of, because of the, uh, the whole thing, I threw the brakes. So, you see the chaos turbine over here putting out basically nothing. And this is the resistor, sorry, resistor brake load. Now, I don't have the switches pulled out. That's right here. I don't have them pulled out, see? And if I pull them out, it puts it on brake, but it puts it on brake that's loaded. So, in other words, it'll tie all three of these together into the brake. 
Otherwise, if the wires are doing this right here, they go to the brakes and they make the brakes straight across, just a dead short. That's if there's no wind and you want to park your turbine. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down for full power and you watch what it does here. Back to full power. You see that? Now, if you have a runaway turbine, you see, and you want to control a runaway turbine, Daniel, bring that over here. He's going to hit the switch for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the negative on here. And you'll see what we have here. We're using a 100 amp pile. And we will put this one over here. Don't hit it yet. And you're going to see the voltage. Now, so she's putting out 14, almost 15 volts right now. Now, when he hits that, I'm going to walk around. When he hits that, you're going to see, don't move it too much. I don't want the wires to touch it. You're going to see that amperage and wattage drop drastically. Now, go ahead and hit it. There it went. Now, it's pulled it, and it's diverting it into that. Keep it on there. Keep it on? Keep it on there. It's going to divert it into that, and then I can safely pull her brakes out and shut her down. So now, you see all the heat she was making? Now let off. Okay, so that is what I do when I need to emergency shut one down. And using this, it'll pull that energy out of it and put a back load on that generator so strong that the generator will just slow down so much that when you do pull the brakes, they're on, you have a fully turned off turbine. Now watch, Daniel, go up there and turn the brakes on for me. Go up there and hit them on. On chaos? No, the brakes, push the two brake buttons in. Now it'll take it a second to gain its wind. There you go. Back and full of power. All right, throw chaos's uh, resistor loaded brakes. All the way. You got to move it pretty quick. Now, right now, what, what it's doing is it's putting its load into the resistors and not into the turbine generator that's up top. We don't want that load in that because high enough winds will cause it to burn up. So it's producing its regular power with a load against it. So you're having a load against it and it's making its power, but it's making its heat down here in these resistors. So normally if you have one of these turbines and you put it on brake, the results will be that when if the wind gets it to break away from its magnetic grip, it'll burn that damn thing up. So this is a way to control one in these conditions. So I can take all of these. Look at this thing here putting out 1,300 watts. This one down here putting out 350 watts. So let's go ahead. That's my run, full run. That's loaded that's a loaded uh, system on it, so it's not on brake and it's not run. It's in the middle. And I can take that one and put it on. And now look, that's the power it's allowing to get through. So you got 38% in each direction that's chopped off of it. So I, said, I probably should correct that so people know what that means. That's basically 76% reduction. And it's a, 30, it's a 38 and 38. 38 here, 38 up top. So you end up with... Uh, 76% cut back on power and you can see the effect. Now go ahead and go ahead and take them both Daniel and put them both back down again. So it's smart to put that heat into resistors that would normally be made in the head of that turbine and there it takes off again and their chaos is back up and running again and of course we have 800 watts here. So in an emergency situation you want to get you one of these. I'll put, if you don't know a good one to get, I'll put a link down there below. Amazon sells the better ones. And you can also pick them up at uh, Harbor Freight sometimes if they have them. They usually don't have these. But you don't need but 100 amp. You don't need anything impressive. And if you're a 48 volt system, you want to get the 12 volt 200 amp one. And it'll work too. It'll work fine. So, all right, guys, y'all see that? I'm going to try to go ahead and make a diagram, or I'll put diagrams in this video of how that up there is wired, what it's to look like when you're doing it. So I'll just put a few pictures, and here pretty soon, um, we should have something a lot more explain with, with a lot better explanation of it, and hopefully, it, hopefully the picture is helping you. So I'm, I'm putting that. There is incoming at the top, outgoing at the bottom, and the outgoing has the ability to be shorted out against resistors for your braking. And quite a few people that's talked to me in my post here 
they've understood this. So I hope that does make sense. And I, I'm going to go over it one more time. Incoming is in the center. So your center pivot points of your blades is incoming from the turbine. See, up here. That's incoming power from turbines. Now, to run straight through, you just pull the blade down. It goes straight through. It goes through here and into your system. I have these thermal switches for my heat, uh, heat sinks on the outer of my rectifiers right here. I have the thermal switches for that. Same thing down in there. And it kicks on. You can hear them running. Kicks on the fans. You can hear the fans all running. They're all running right now. And that cools the rectifier. And some people say, well, if you got a rectifier that gets hot, it ain't no good. Well, you got if your rectifier don't get hot, maybe you ain't making no power. Rectifiers get hot, okay? Diodes get hot. And if they're super efficient, they don't get as hot. But you have a choice. You can spend $300 on a super efficient one or just add another turbine. Um, now, up here, back where we're at, we have the ability to throw it up. And when we throw this switch up, it feeds through this wire. Now, just pay no attention to the cluster. Down into a down into a resistor, comes through the resistor, goes into a three-way terminal right here. Now, what you have here is I have two switches. I use two points in a switch to make two wires that go in the center right here. And then I came off each leg of the switch. So what it does is when you close the switch, it connects right here, short circuits these two. If you pull both switches, it short circuits these two and these two together. So all three, it's like one big toggle, which you could use if you want, but I wanted something more power handling capability. And then the wires come out of here and they return and they go down, coming right here and they return to this. So when this is pulled up, the only way you're gonna get power back to these wires coming down is to make this loop coming back using the same terminals to come back down and go here. Now I'm using 10 gauge for this and it's fine because when it's under resistor load or it's under the other, all your activity happens here and you're not making any power, you don't have to worry about it. And here I have to use eight gauge on one of those or six gauge, so that's six and eight there I believe. And you have to use a heavier gauge. I believe I got all A's here. So you have to use 8 gauge um, or you're going to eat your wires up. Now, if you're a 24 volt, you could probably use 10 gauge. And if you're 48, you should use 10 gauge also up to about 800 watts as far as your before your rectifier. Afterwards, of course, you use a minimum of 6 and in some cases 4 gauge. So this is 6 here. This is 8 here. These are 10 for that loop. And this is for a 500, a 800, and a 700 watt turbine. They work beautifully this way. So all the parts I can think of, I'll put below there. And I hope this makes sense. You get up there and see it a lot better there. Coming through from the top, from there, going through the resistors, short circuit brake switching system connected to the back side of that, coming out, back down, and there. Same way, back down and there. Like I said, when that's up, you can't get power down to those terminals without doing that. So there you go. All right, guys, I hope that makes sense. And I'm glad we had ability to show a little test of it. And you can see here, 131 degrees. That's a little bit warm, making a lot of power. There we are. We're going to get the other two in later.